Okay, guys, I hope you're doing well. So as you know, every Sunday, I'm trying to do like a technical analyze, analyze where like I'm talking and exchanging a lot with you, yeah? But uh, since two weeks, I've been kind of busy. I was in UAE and I was in Dubai, so I didn't have that much time. But we back, okay, we're back on the chart. And um, you remember last time with Priyage, I, uh, I invited a guest. And now what I want to do, I want to bring more guests because... Some of you like my style of trading, okay? They like because I give you good entries and you can either hold the position for a short amount of time, such as a scalp, okay? Or you can have more like a day trade position or even a swing. And today I decided to invite one of my friends who's called Matt. So Matt, you can uh, turn on your mic now. Hello. Hi, Rod. So um, what we're going to do is, um, guys, we're going to do a live session with Matt, okay? It's going to be the same thing that I would with Priyash. So I'm going to go to some charts, okay? And then what I'm going to do is Matt's going to go to other charts too. And uh, and that's it. Basically, we're going to share our different opinion about what's going on in the market. Uh, and that's it. Very simple, as you know. So I'm going to start first, okay? And uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to go to the economic calendar, okay? Um, because everyone is asking me every time, Suzy, but how can I know if there is some news? You go on the economic calendar, for example, investing.com. This is the main one that I use. And I guess, Matt, you're also like reading the news to, to get a new position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I usually use uh, Forex Factory for the news for me. Once okay, I'll, yeah. 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 It's similar anyway. So when it's on Sunday, okay, the new week didn't start. So you just put uh, this week, no, sorry, next week, okay? So it's going to be, uh, oh, sorry, this week, my bad. This week, is gonna, so Monday first and everything. Then you go in filters because you have different type of news. You know, you can see the one with like two stars, three stars, uh, one with one stars. And if you have three stars, it means it's very important. If you are one star, there is nothing. And tomorrow is bank holidays. So that's why it's not going to be like much volatility on the market. But let's see what's going on. Um, so you select here to three stars because we only care about the major one. So as I told you tomorrow, nothing to trade. But during the week, we're going to have some news on Tuesday about AUE, AUD, Euro, GB. So we're going to have a couple pair. On Wednesday, it's going to be a very uh, interesting day. And on Friday, we're going to have to NFP. Do you trade NFP, Matt? Uh, sometimes, but probably not most days, no. Yeah, yeah. There's gonna, just too much yeah. volume in the market. I don't know which, which way is going to go as well. Exactly. So we're going to go uh, straight to the thing. And don't worry, guys, if you have some question about Matt, we're going to be answering at the end of the session. First, we're just going to go um, to everything. So the first thing, as you know me, guys, I always go on the weekly. I try to identify the different tra uh, trends that we have, okay? Uh, so we have, since a long period, a bullish trend on the... Uh, oh, we start with USD CAD. Okay, so we're going to go with USD CAD. I thought we were with USD. Um, so we had like a bullish trend, Okay. And we also have like a bearish trend on the weekly. It's very important. And on the long term, we're going to have a wedge zone. Uh, on the weekly, we can't give that much information at the moment. So we're going to go on the lower time frame. So on the daily, we had a kind of another daily trend appearing right here. And USDCAD here, it hit the trend and then went all the way down. Um, at the moment, there is nothing to do for me regarding T-Spare because we are in the middle of the market. And as you guys know, uh, my way of trading is mainly based on supply and demand. So 80% of the time, I'm not trading. So let's say this is my resistance, the line of 1.36524 and 1.32105 is my support. So I'm going to trade when we're very near to the support, okay? And very close to the resistance. But when we are in the middle, yeah? we don't trade. And this is an advice um, I love to give because for me, it's something that changed my trading career. It's simply that not knowing when not to trade is also part of knowing how to trade. So most of the time when you're in the middle, you don't know how the market's going to move, okay? So it can go up, depending on your strategy, obviously. And obviously when you go on a higher time frame, the probability of losing a trade is way smaller because you are using like more institutional level. 
So yeah, at the moment, uh, you as the cat, uh, there is nothing to do, as you can see, into the middle. So it might go up, might go down. We don't know. But what I know for the moment is once it's going to go back to the trend, I might get into a short position. But at the moment, for me, you as the cat, uh, there is nothing to do. So now I would like to know your opinion about it, Matt. Yeah, sure. So should I just sh uh, share my screen? Yeah, yeah, share your yeah. screen. See everything, yeah? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, perfect. So then you use the card, yeah? Yeah, let's go. You use the card, you use the card. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Delete everything first. Yeah, so I usually start from daily as well. Checking, obviously, the trend of the market. You see, at the moment, there's nothing much really going on. Uh, but we mainly trade liquidity grabs. So obviously we'd be looking for to see Explain where the market what is uh, liquidity traps because most of them yeah. may be new. So all the vocabulary or any like so it's basically yeah. So it's basically, for example, for example, as you see, we've got liquidity right here at the top. So it's basically where people enter shorts. And what happens is the big institutions, so you've got the banks uh, that trade, what they do, they take out these sellers first. And then they enter their own sales afterwards. Once once they took all the sellers out of the market, same with the buy, buy for the for the um, buys as well. What they do, they look for sell side liquidity, which is here. All these works, as you can see, this would be where the buyers are coming in, and the banks wait. On the, so once all the buyers come in, the banks basically then take them all out, and then we look for a re reaction. For example, here as you can see, we've got a daily order block. So it's basically the last down candle before the move to the upside happened. So what you should do, I'd usually um. Mark that up as my order block. As you see, liquidity is right here. So the, we would take liquidity right here. We draw it up like this. And then obviously, once liquidity was which would be taken, we'd see if we get a reaction to this order block to continue to the move to the upside, basically. But at the moment, what I can see happening here is we probably will be taking the liquidity to the downside here, the south liquidity, um, to be able to go higher in the market. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So for you at the moment, USD CAD, what's your opinion? Better to wait? Yeah. I'll, at this point right now, I'd be waiting. Yeah. Because obviously, as you said, it would be you waiting for it to tap back in and then sell, which I'd, obviously I'll be waiting as well for it to go low before entering buys for myself. Yeah. So we kind of have the same support. At the yeah. Level. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the liquidity trap, like as you said, and like supply and demand area are the same thing because. Oh, yeah. It's basically the same. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. supply and demand is mainly based on like institutions. So. It's exactly the same thing at the end. Yeah. Of okay, perfect. Um, can you go to EURUSD, for example, for us? Yeah. That's my the pair we tried most of the EURUSD. Yeah, most liquid one. <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, daily. We can see we actually, at the moment, we're in the trend of the daily here. Uh, and we've got this daily order block as well here, as you can see, which we have just literally tapped into it. So let's look at the four hour. Yeah, one hour. So yeah, as you can see, we tapped into this wood block so we could see here on the hourly, right here. We took that and we reacted here. And now we're going to continue basically to the downside to take this liquidity to the downside here, possibly take with these lows here as well. Yeah, so if for your SD, I'll probably be entering shorts as well. Same as same, same as USD, thank you. Yeah, your USD. Yeah, shorts you for me. wait for it to, to go a bit yeah. high, hit the resistance at the level you showed 1.10767. Yeah. Get into a short position. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, okay, let me share my screen now. Okay, now about uh, my opinion. So, Euro USD. So Euro USD is very interesting. Uh, it's also one of my favorite pairs. So as you can see on the weekly, this is what's going on. Okay, we have like a bullish trend it's going all the way up. Then uh, that's a, for me, it's the most important thing, you know, like when you go on the weekly is more to identify, is it a bear trend or a bullish trend? But at the moment we can see that it's going all the way up. Then we're going to go on the daily. And on the daily, I like to zoom out to have like a global understanding of what's going on. So as you can see, we had a kind of resistance that has been like previously hit, as you said, Matt, you see around that level. Yeah. I'm going to put it in another color. So green here, we had the same thing, green, 
um, queen at that level, then test it again. So a lot of you asking me, oh, but how do you know if like your resistance or your support is strong? Is like pretty simple. Like more often it's like hit that level is hit and rejected. Like then you like if that level is like rich and it got rejected pretty easily and often, then it means this resistance is very strong. So as you can see, we have the resistance. Then we can go on the on the lower time frame for our and uh, and exact we have exactly the same opinion about your Z because at the moment there is yeah. to do because I could tell you I think it's gonna go down obviously, but um, the main reason why I wouldn't is like your stop loss would be so high. So if you go here, it's like around 60 pips. So you add an extra 15 pips just to make sure you're already 80 pips down, you know? So it doesn't necessarily like work taking the risk right now. I wouldn't get into a, a short position. So yeah, for me, the best right now about the Euro -Z is to be patient. I know it, it sounds boring, guys, like to be patient, but I told you, knowing to not trade is knowing how to trade. And so you wait for it to hit the resistance and then you can potentially get into a short position. This is my opinion about uh, Euro USD. Uh, now about, um, I wanted to go on USDTHF. Okay, this one is very interesting. So we had a quick scalp. I'm gonna remove the whole chart. So the first thing is to go on the weekly to try to identify like a kind of trend. Um, at the moment, we can see it's going down, but I can't like really like draw a trend because T scandal is mainly due to liquidity. And then you can see that here also, like it's all about the news. So getting and using those information as a trend is not really reliable. You could potentially have something like this, but then this whole space here is too big. So it's not very useful information. So I would just rather go to the daily and just try to zoom out as usual and be okay. What's currently interesting. Um, so I would obviously draw the major resistance as always, you know, and the major support, which is around here. For me, the resistance and support, they always touch the, the candles. Then we have the intra here, but because we have this kind of trend, we can do the translation all the way till we're here. That would be around here if it post. Now, um, you can see that some people have here kind of support, yeah, but in the sense that, yeah, it got reached, it got reached, this is a support. Then the support got broken, so I'm going to get into a short position when you retest, but as you can see, the support is not that strong. It broke it and broke it again and broke it. Now we have a candle rejection. So for me, this level, okay, 0 0.89420, doesn't really mean anything. It's not like, for my strategy personally, I couldn't be, okay, I'm going to get into a short position, even if the stochastic is there. Like, I'm going to go and see what's the four hours chart saying. And if we zoom out, yeah, you can see like here, it was pretty obvious to that level. And now like it's breaking it kind of like easily. Um, you can find a kind of trend around here. No, not even to be honest, had a kind of yeah trend like this exactly, and then got broken with this weak resistance. So this area for me is kind of confusing, and I wouldn't personally trade it. I would wait a bit longer for USDTHF to go even lower to the main support, or maybe to go higher and maybe to go to a a bit stronger resistance around that level and in that level 0.90981 i could get into a buy position matt yep oh, no, no. Uh, sure. <laughs> Yeah, so as you're saying, obviously the area that broke on the four hour, if we have a look here, it left a lot of wicks as well. We took these liquidity lows here on the four hour, which is good. Obviously, this means that the market is then obviously reversed and we're going to continue going up a bit higher now. If we go to 30 minute as well. Yes, yeah, so we see on the 30 minute, we actually left equal highs here, which basically means that you think that them equal high is going to be able to take them first to, for the market to basically go 
back down if that's what it wants to do. So what I'd wait for here is for the equal highs first to be taken out first. And then on the, for example, here, as you can see, as soon as this equal highs get taken out, we've got a nice order block in the 30 minute, which I'd look for a reaction first before entering on a lower, uh, sorry, low time frame, for example, like the five minute, 15 minute. And then obviously this forms a nice liquidity area as well to be grabbed. So once we grab this, potentially I'm, I am looking for it to definitely go higher to this level here. And then from here, I'd look for shorts myself. Okay. So you will wait for the level to hit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'd be waiting for it to push a bit higher first, like you said as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you and I like kind of agree on the same thing that not trading is to know when to trade. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because obviously, a lot of people they're always like, you know, that they want they want like 10, 20 signals a day. They expect like you know, single signals like every like five, ten minutes, but it doesn't work like that. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Mostly. Yeah. Um. Any other period that you like to to analyze or which period do you also trade a lot? GBB USD, for example. We we uh rarely we mainly trade Euro USD. Most of the time. Okay, so you're um, so um wait we're just gonna um before I go on the on the theme on the on the other thing uh what what do you exactly do so like how did you learn how to invest and in, and in everything so it started it started first year actually very very first year of my sixth form college basically um my friend my friend basically like introduced it to me. Because he was basically working himself with this um, signals company, so he was like, oh, "I joined this." So I joined that first. Um, obviously, deposited my account multiple times, lost every single time, um, lost a lot of money during my whole process. But obviously, I came, I came across smart money concept trading. Yeah, and I was like, oh, "I'll give this a go then," because I've tried other strategies as well, and none of them really worked. So I started that around two years ago now, and that's when I got introduced to fund for like um, prop firms as well. Yeah. So from the accounts, so I've tr tried multiple accounts, failed m most of them. And then obviously only last year, I think I started to get the hang of it and started to, yeah. And so now on True Frox funds, I'm actually fully funded 200K now. So. Oh, sick. That's sick. Yeah. That, that's amazing. That's amazing. So yeah, you have a, like a very good story. So yeah. do you, uh, do you do you offer like courses what do you like do you offer like do you have a website because maybe because as you can see like you're going like on a smaller time frame okay yeah that kind of, of like the way of trading might like much more on my uh, the other like members of my telegram group uh do you have any website or something where people can reach out to you yeah so we do have a website at the moment uh, you can join our free Telegram as well as our page. So you have a free version where people can uh, just follow and... Yeah, so we, we send occasional trades there, try and help out. But our main focus is in the paid one where we actually, you know, we sit with people one on one, help them pass these challenges as well as like help them trade. So that's main focus. But on the side, we do send the trades that we take ourselves as off people. Okay, sick. Um, can you maybe send in the chats uh, your website? Yeah, I can do, yeah. Yeah, like this, if the, the members uh, can can have a global understanding of what you do, like uh, even try your service and try everything. Then, guys, I'm going to go. Okay, so that's the website. And if I send it. Uh -huh. Wait, wait, go and try. Oh, yeah, maybe it's better if we put it like this yeah like these people can so guys i would recommend you after the live to go and click on the website to have a global understanding uh i'm currently watching your website bro your website is sick though it's like clean very simple yeah it's my um, co-partner so bartosh he he's actually also designs websites himself so okay. he designed it for us basically so yeah so what i would recommend you guys is like to join because he has like a free group so go inside the free group and just take a look at what he's doing. And in case you like, like, it's always good to have, like, like I said, with Priyash, it's nice, his way of trading. But here you can also have another way of understanding how the market works. Because me, as you know, it's like always like higher time frame. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go on uh, GBB USD. So you only trade. Oh, that's very interesting. It's retesting the trend. Okay. Um, so you only trade Euro USD mainly, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for the strategy we use, we sometimes trade GPUSD as well because that aligns with EURUSD as well, which is nice yeah. most okay. of the time. Okay, okay, amazing. 
Okay, so guys, um, GBBUSD on the weekly, there is a kind of like bullish trend, as you can see, it's going all the way up. Then, as usual, we go on the on the daily, and on the daily, gonna we're gonna try to find resistance and support. And this is a typical example why I'm always saying like, guys, zoom out. Because some people would be, oh, look, Susie, here there is a resistance. Uh, it touched the body. The new candle broke it, so it means it's gonna go up. But that's true if you only look at this. But if you zoom out, you can see that no, before it wasn't solid. A solid key level was here. So now you can understand that GBBUSD has more space to go up, potentially hit a level 26532. Once it hit that level, then you can get into a short position. So GBBUSD is one of the pairs that's going to be into my watch list. I'm going to be watching this pair very closely. Because for me, um, it makes a lot of sense on a daily resistance like this. Um, on the four hour, as you can see, we had like some news which made like the pair spike all the way up. But yeah, same thing with GBB USD. Uh, for the moment, there is absolutely nothing to do. Uh, and that's it. Also, maybe just I'm going to go to gold quickly. Uh, oh, oops. Gold. Um, I'm going to remove everything and just go on the weekly on the weekly same thing we can see that we have a bullish trend is going all the way up okay um on the daily and some people are oh, but switch your strategy is like kind of simple but this is the way of trading like this is how like all the institutions and everyone is investing their money like this is like the safest way to invest your money if you want to go gam if you want to gamble like it's better for you to go and play like i don't know the roulette, you know, you, you will have more chance to win, to be honest. Um, XAUSD, four hour, and yeah, for me, do, do you trade gold, Matt? No, nah, we don't trade gold, oh, no, no. Yeah. yeah, me, I'm not a big fan. Yeah, I'm not, no. And there is a lot of volatility, so a lot of people can like, if they don't use the proper risk management, um, they can easily get burned. Uh, XAUSD, so that, that's it. About this pair for me, uh, so we went through like uh, different pairs. So you only trade Euro USD, or do you treat any other pair? Yeah, Euro USD mainly, and then sometimes we look at GBP USD rarely though. Okay, and how many investment do you send per week? Well, we trade mainly Tuesday to Thursdays. We don't trade Mondays because obviously the market's slow, and we, we want to see how the daily closes first before obviously enter any trades. And then Fridays, sometimes it might be one trade. But it depends on the news because obviously there's a lot of news coming on Fridays. So it's usually yeah. one to two trades, one to two trades sent out uh, Tuesday to Tuesday to Thursday, and it's mainly um, pre-London London session and then New York. Okay, okay, amazing. So guys, um, you have the website right here. Okay, I'm gonna send it again right here. So go check it. Check the website. It's a free Telegram, so you can go there and literally like get to know them, get to see what they're doing. And in case you, if you like, you can just like join and and learn their way of trading. Um, I think that's it for the session. We went through different charts. Do you have any, any else to, uh, anything else to add, Matt? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. I uh, just wanted to add, obviously, we, in our, in our group, we mainly focus on the risk reward. So we look at, for example, one to two or one to three. So basically means like, Risking one percent, you get two percent back on your, your account, or three percent back. Rather than, we basically don't look at pips. For example, we may look at the risk rewards because it helps with the um, especially helps with the funded challenges as well. Looking at risk rewards mainly. That's the, that's why we pretty much look at it. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So guys, as I told you, go check his website because it's always good. I like to have like those kind of like interviews, live trading session where I exchange with people, and um, it's gonna be posted on YouTube, guys. So if you have any question. Feel free. Um, do you have your tele um, Telegram? Is in oh yeah, so people can find yeah. So if they if they join the Telegram, that we should uh, be tagged. Oh yeah, in the there messages, are your so they can just message me. Yeah, yeah, they can just yeah, message us if they want to. Yeah, I can see. I can see that. That's their name when you join. Okay, amazing. So guys, thank you for coming, and Matt, thank you very much for your time. For no worries, appreciate it. Me and uh, guys, yeah, feel free to check the website and uh, let me know what you think about it. See you guys.